the, let your hips come all the way back. Like, be, do this like, really, really poorly right now. So, see, the problem here is that Kevin likes to load completely into his hips. Essentially, if we were to draw his squat as a stick figure, it would look something like this. Notice how in this diagram here, pretend his foot is flat. Uh, if this is midline, the application of force, the distance between his hips and that midline or the application of force is very, very long. So almost all of the load or all of the force production requirement or force requirement is going to be here, uh, which is fine. I mean, it's a stronger muscle group, but if we could evenly distribute that or even just decrease this, that would be the goal. Keep that bar high. Remember how it feels like I'm pulling it up? Pull your hips down. A little high, pull your hips all the way down. There we go. That was good, one more. Nice. All right, so this is obviously a little bit of an exaggeration and there's kind of some nasty glare going on, but basically you can see the big difference, the exaggerated differences are uh, Feet and knees generally in the same position. Shin should be about the same as well. Uh, but what we've done here is we've allowed a little bit more forward hip translation, open up his knees a little bit. And the main difference here that we want to look at is this distance here from this axis to the application of force here. That distance there becomes shorter than it is over here. And that shorter distance means less force requirement or a smaller force requirement here. So with the same amount of weight, he now has to produce less force. Not only that, but because his torso is at this angle rather than this angle here, it's a shorter angular range of motion for him to extend from here to here. So we can say the combination shorter range of motion, smaller force requirements, overall, just two small differences makes all the difference in the world for this little guy over here. The point of this video though is guys, technical efficiency or mechanical efficiency, however you want to say it, um, it is probably the fastest way you can ever progress with your strength. You figure with the same amount of force production, if force production is limited by muscular size, generally, uh, you know, the cross-sectional surface area of a muscle determines how much force you can produce. So bigger muscle means more force production. You can't grow your muscles that fast, but what you can do is you can change your technique very quickly. And if you can change your technique to make yourself more efficient, you very literally can move more weight without getting stronger. And that should be the first thing on everybody's list of priorities if you're a powerlifter. Uh, if you want help with this, I do offer a service. Go to the Titanium Fitness Store, link down below or in a card over here. Go to the store, um, take a look at my form check service. We'll be using videos, uh, video feedback. I will offer you my own evaluation of your current errors, what we're gonna do to fix it, some drills you can do, some variations of exercises that you can do to fix that. And uh, yeah, we'll fix your technique. All right, great, see you later, bye.